Nerd Reactor, roll out. What's up, Reactorites? John here, and yes, it's time to talk about Wonder Woman 1984. This movie is a sequel to the first film directed by Patty Jenkins and also starring Gal Gadot. And with 1984, Patty Jenkins, she's back in the director's chair. And Gal, she is reprising her role as Diana Prince, a.k.a. Wonder Woman. And I was able to see this movie and I absolutely enjoyed it. It was refreshing. It was different for a superhero film. Uh, and I love the... I just love the mystery behind the film and the, the new villains that Diana Prince is going up against. You have Max Lord, who's played by Pedro Pascal, and you have Cheetah, who's played by Kristen Wiig. And this movie, it was very emotional. There's like action in there. And I love the 80s theme. There's a lot to like about this movie. There, I do have some gripes about it, but I'll talk about that later uh but yeah with the first wonder woman wonder woman she saves a day along with her team she defeats Ares. Uh, chris pine who plays steve trevor sacrifices himself for uh you know to help save the lives of others and so he died and so now we have wonder woman 1984 fast forward to that from world war one to 1984 and uh, wonder woman is still doing what she's doing she's helping out people she's saving innocent bystanders she has a job at the museum so she's she's busy and throughout these years she has experienced loneliness wonder woman she's gonna lose friends due to time old age etc especially with her friends like uh, especially in wonder woman where she made friends along the way but since she is a demigod she can live a long life she's She's an immortal, and it's a very lonely life. I guess that's you get to really see that, and you know it's really affecting her, especially with her love life. And uh, you know she still thinks about Chris Pine or Steve Trevor. It's it's kind of like that moment with Captain America still looking at Peggy Carter uh, with his the little locket that he has. But with this, with Wonder Woman, it's the driving force. Uh, this this relationship between her and Steve Trevor. And uh, if you've seen the trailer, you know, Steve Trevor is back and he's back in the eighties and he is kind of like the uh, f uh, man out of time because he has no idea what's happening. So he's wearing these different outfits and he's trying to get the approval from gal or from Diana. He's like, Hey, is this, is this good? Is this okay? And then he has the fanny pack and all that. And so, yeah, the movie does explain what happened. So you won't be guessing throughout the thing. So just early on, you're in it for the ride. And then with the two new characters, the new antagonists, uh, Wig as Barbara and Minerva and Pedro Pascal as Max Lord. Uh, these are very interesting characters and uh, they can be a little hokey at times, but then the movie you know, peels off the layers from like an onion. Onions have layers. And uh, you get to just understand more about their character. For example, Barbara, she's working at the same museum as Deanna Prince. And she looks up to Deanna because she sees Deanna as this woman who's taking charge and not afraid and very confident. And she's the opposite of that. She's new. She's wearing glasses. She's kind of nerdy. And she's shy and nervous. So Diana Prince is the, the woman that she wants to be. Somewhere along the line, something happens to her. And she starts to become more confident. And so you get to see this transformation, which I don't want to reveal how she's transforming. But it's great to see that, especially with Kristen Wiig playing as her. And I, I love this because it's not... It's, it's very subtle. Uh, I wouldn't say too subtle, but it's you can you notice a change. And with her being the, the shy, the nervous version before, it wasn't as hokey as compared to other movies where they've done a similar thing. Like uh, Jim Carrey, who played Edward Nigma, a.k.a. the Riddler, or Jamie Foxx from, uh, he, from Nerd to Electro. But this one, it wasn't as, you know, there's still some cringe moments, but it was more like, uh, you know, I feel, I feel far sorry for her. She doesn't feel like a caricature 
like a comedic caricature like oh this is so uh out of left field it's just her character is not as silly as uh the max character that jamie fox plays uh aka electro and but yeah with this uh you know i, 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 lo- I loved her i love Kristen wiggs performance as barbara and minerva and speaking of pedro pascal as max lord i know that there's gonna be some comic fans that not might like the changes that they made for max lord because this movie does change it a bit but i i like this version of max lord just because he's i'm, I'm actually caring about the character and he's not like this cookie cutter villain and i'm actually kind of rooting for him <laughs> for max lord and it's Pedro Pascal, he's, you know, he's, he, he was a Mandalorian. He was in Game of Thrones. So he's just knocking it out of the park right now. And I want to see him in more movies and shows. But yeah, each of the characters, uh, Barbara and Max Lord, they all have their own wants, their own desires, their own goals. And that's what I like about these characters that you can't really fault them for that. Like, I, I get it, you know? Just, I get it. And as for Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, as Diana Prince, like Gal is able to bring this life to this character with compassion and strength. And that's what I love about her. Like, you feel like you you watch her, it's like, man, I feel so warm inside. And, uh, so much warmth from her performance and how she portrays Wonder Woman because in this one she really cares like in the first one she cares about too like you know people are dying or getting hurt and she doesn't want to stand down when she can do something about it because she is a demigod and with this film she's still helping out people at the beginning of the movie like between you know world war one and now like you know you get a sense that she's still doing what she can to help out there are some heroes that will go out of their way to try to help people and one woman does this where there are certain people that are going to get hurt and she tries to save them and it's you you see this throughout the film even even bad guys so well, yeah that's that's great like I, I love seeing that like just wonder woman just really trying not to hurt people with gal gadot as wonder woman once again she just oozes beauty vigor and warmth and you know i'm i'm all for it and just want to see more of gal as wonder woman and how many other wonder woman films we'll get to see and then Let's talk about Chris Pine as Steve Trevor. You know, he's back and he is a man out of time. And people have been questioning why he is back in the 80s when he died in the first Wonder Woman film. And this movie, when that happens, when you see him, they explain it right away. And they don't, you're just like, you're in it for the ride. So you're not figuring out what's happening. They just explain it to you. You're like, okay, this is, I got it. And then you're just in it for the ride so that the whole movie can focus on what's important, which I think is the relationship between Diana Prince and Steve Trevor and how important they are for each other. But then it also asks other questions on on life and then, you know, what you have to do to sacrifice and all that. And it's very touching and it's very emotional. But yeah, this the relationship is a very important part of this film with those two and patty jenkins uh, she doubled down on this film like there was a relationship in the first one this one there's more of that and i think it was used to great effect uh, another thing i want to talk about is the music for wonder woman uh, you know hans zimmer he's back the music i i love but there is one part in the movie where they reused a song or a, a track from batman v superman and, you know, whether you like or hate that movie, like the soundtrack for Batman v Superman, it's, I, I loved it. And uh, I, I got goosebumps hearing that again. And so once you watch it in that part, uh, you'll, you'll probably, if you're like me, you'll be like, oh, that's a good thing. That's a good spot. I love it. I love the use for that. And, uh, you know, Wonder Woman, it's a superhero film. And, uh, you know, the action, there is action in here. And it's not as epic as what you've seen in the first Wonder Woman film where she's jumping around and she's fighting during World War One. She went to no man's land and she's crashing through buildings. Here, uh, she's still fighting. She's still using her lasso. She's jumping all around and beating up people, but it's never, like it doesn't feel epic in scope because it always feels contained in certain areas. Like there's one fight in a, uh, I guess a building museum. With that aside, 
Wonder Woman, she still gets to shine. Like there are moments where if you're a fan of Wonder Woman or if you're a fan of just superhero movies, there was an homage to it was Richard Donner's Superman. And so that gave me goosebumps. I was like, oh, this is amazing. And some other people might be like, oh, my God, they just they they did it. They uh, they did that thing that was like so outlandish and they pulled it off. I don't want to say what it is, but they pulled it off. And I was like, this is such a cool way to show that, especially for Wonder Woman fans. Uh, I guess my gripe would be that my biggest gripe would be Cheetah, because most of the time you get to see Kristen Wiig as Barbara and Minerva and you know she's she's growing out of her shell because she was shy and nervous and then she becomes confident she becomes sexy all all the guys are now uh you know looking at her and noticing her that's still like a middle transformation but then in later on you know she becomes cheetah like fully transformed and she's like a uh, humanoid cheetah and the CG for that is not the greatest. It's not super bad because, you know, the when Wonder Woman fights Cheetah, it's at night. And so you can't really see clearly, like, the details. And also, the fights, the fight scene was pretty short. <laughs> so that was kind of anticlimactic. Like, it was, yeah, it just wasn't as long. So it's like these battles with these superhuman characters like the battle with her and Ares and then this one with Cheetah uh not that eventful uh this one is less eventful because it's, I, I felt like it was shorter than the first one because the first one you know, Ares is throwing stuff all over the place uh but this one is short but I think uh that with it being short the fight being short and then with the, the CG just not being up to snuff I think it was okay because they can focus on other parts of the story so this was more of a uh, subplot and so they can just worry about the big meat of it all. Uh, overall, like I enjoyed the film and I thought it was hopeful. It was heartbreaking. It was heartwarming. It was heroic. Uh, I don't know if I can think of more H's. And I, I love the characters in here. Pedro Pascal as Max Lord. He uh, He's good. It's like it's, he hams it up when he wants to be. But then there's also moments where you're, you're, you're feeling sympathetic for his character. And it's the same thing with Kristen Wiig where she's just she just wants to be more than who she is and with Chris Pine and Gal Gadot just them working together it's just a joy it's a treat to watch them coming together for another time after the sad ending for the first Wonder Woman film because I I, I like the chemistry between these two characters and actors and so those are my thoughts for Wonder Woman uh, once the movie comes out let me know what your thoughts are on the comments below with that said I'm John and I'll see you guys next time